everyone knows Aimpod. From the classic M2 and M3 models to the more modern ones like the cute little Aimpod Acro and of course the latest and probably greatest at the moment, the Aimpod M5. But this video isn't about the new Aimpods, this is about the very first Aimpod, the grandfather of them all. So this is it, the Aimpod Electronic G1. This one was produced from 1975 to 1979 and it was the first commercially available battery powered LED red dot side. So let's have a look inside. This is the original packing. It was stored for a long, long time and the unit inside is in very good condition, probably because it was either returned or never sold. And there you have it. That's a chunk of metal. <laughs> well, it is metal, it is rather heavy, and this is as simple as a side can be. Because you don't move the reticle with it, it has an external adjustment for elevation. I'm just trying to get it for you guys. There you go. And for windage adjustment. That means when you turn this stuff, you don't turn the reticle inside the tube, you actually turn the whole tube on the mount. That's a rather old school design that's also uh, appliable for the old Alcon sites. And I think even the new, some of the newer ones, but yeah, well, mid 70s. This knob with the zero on it would turn the side on and adjust the brightness. Well, if this unit would work. I managed to get the RM1 Insta batteries for that one, but it didn't work anyway. So I took a look inside the unit and found out that all the cables are ripped and almost like, um, not just rusty, but uh, in pieces. So I'm not an electrician, so I'm afraid I can't reactivate the Aimpoint Electronic G1. Well, Lucky for me, the seller of this one was kind enough to send me a second unit. And the second unit had exactly the same problem. All the internal cables were rotten and <laughs> almost pulverized. So no way to rescue that. And to add insult to injury, because I tried to somehow reactivate it, disassembled, reassembled it, the battery cover has a very, very fine thread and it became totally stuck in the process. And the same happened to me on the second unit. So these ones are just to look at at the moment, unfortunately, and not look through it. But if you would look through it, you would see the red dot in there. You can also see that it has the blue hue that's typically for the aim points especially for the older ones. And if you look also, you see that it's just a 14 millimeter window. So that's very, very tiny compared to modern standards. It's even smaller than most pistol red dots that are available on the market right now. So let's take a closer look at the included mount. This one is for Weaver Proval. That means it may fit some of the modern Picatinny rails, but also may not. So maybe you have applied a bit of love to make it fit on a Picatinny rail. Well, you find an old Weaver style profile. They are still around anyway. What's interesting is that you can adjust the mount by losing the screw. Uh, so open this, pull it out and push it back here to adjust for the length of the mount. My guess is that this was meant for two-piece scope mounts that were typical for older and hunting rifles in the time period, especially for bolt action rifles. My SIG 5F3 has a third party rail and lucky me, <laughs> I guess this third rod party rail is not Picatinny spec, so I should be able to mount the Aimpound Electronic G1 on this rifle. And, yep, it seems to be a fit. 
let me just screw the screws on and I'm officially done screwing around. There you go. I have to say that Aimpoint Electronic G1 actually doesn't look half bad on a modern rifle. I mean, <laughs> it doesn't look super shit either, but it's not as terrible as some of the cheaper China <laughs> red dot sites that are currently out there. Now, here's an interesting thing. If you thought that red dot magnifiers are a modern thing, well, look at that. Aimpoint actually had a three times modifier for the very first A point. This was made in Japan and not in Sweden. So <laughs> you can guess that it's probably like, I don't know, Tusco made or something like that. Anyway, here you go. This unit looks pretty much brand new. Finish is fully intact. And to mount this little one, you remove the protective cap and the G1 has an internal thread here. So you just go there, screw, screw, screw. There's a lot of screwing going on in this video. And that's it. And you just converted your red dot side to a scope. Three times scope. <laughs> Of course, the field of view isn't that good, but I mean, it does work. And if you think of it, this was released in the mid 70s. So people back then would have probably thought that it is some um, weird firearm magic that's going on. At least I'd like to believe that someone was having the red dot for the first time turning it on and oh it's a red dot and then he put on the magnified oh it's a scope now this is the best thing since uh, cut bread or whatever the americans like to eat nowadays and <laughs> with that said there you have it that's the very first aim point that there was the grandfather of all the other aim points that followed the pathfinder of aim points if you will. Again, really, really unfortunate that I don't have a working unit, but if you have a working unit of the Inbound Electronic G1, please leave a comment in this video section for the comments. Just leave a comment on the YouTube page and I'll be happy to hear about your experience with the Inbound Electronic G1 on a modern firearm. And that's it for me, as always. It would be great if you would support me by checking out my t-shirt designs. Yeah, I made this crap. <laughs> At scarity.redbubble.com. Nothing more left to say then, until we meet again. Adios, muchachos.